so many I'm just proud to say that, you know, even in my my most difficult moments, you know, she's she's my balance. She's my accountability. She's my corrector. And we all need correcting sometimes. Yes, come on. <laughs> and um, Jesus. Hallelujah. The apostle reached out to us and he said, uh, he said, you know, we're not gonna be here the last Sunday of the month. And it just happens to be your last Sunday in New York. And he said, so I'd like for one of you guys to bring the word and preach. And right away I said, I want my wife to preach. I want my wife to bring the word. I want her to release whatever God placed in her heart. Because the Lord definitely speaks to her. She's my prophetess. Come on. Without further ado, welcome Apostle Letitia Muniz. Same tactics 
to bring us back to the very place that God delivered us from. Come on. Yes, that's right. And you know the word of God says that you'll end up worse than what you actually were. So today I'm gonna today we're gonna talk a bit about psychological warfare. Come on. Go there. Come on. Identifying the tactics of the enemy against your mind and knowing what your weapon of warfare is. Yes, come on. Many times we get caught up in warfare and you know the word of God says that he will teach our hands he will prepare our hands for war and our fingers for battle, and we always want to fight. We always ready to fight. We always ready to come in, slay the sword. I'm guilty. I'll be the first one in the front like, what you said, devil? What you said? I know my authority. You know, but that's not always the posture and position for you to win the war that's happening. That's right. The, so the Lord was has been ministering to me about psychological warfare. It is one of the most strategic positions of the enemy against your life. The greatest battles that we will face in our lives will always begin in our mind. The war for your life and for your soul will always begin in your mind. So as the Lord began to speak to me, the Holy Spirit says psychological warfare is based upon how we are trapped by our own understanding or misunderstanding of ourselves. Come on. I want you guys to take notes today. I got a lot of scripture for you. Come on. But I'm going to say that one more time. Psychological warfare is based upon how we are trapped by our own understanding or misunderstanding of ourselves. And I decree and declare that by the end of the service today, every area of your mind that you've been stagnant, that you've been trapped, I declare that cell is breaking open by the power that's in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I've come to understand and know my places of vulnerability. And where, where my struggles are, where my weaknesses are, where my insecurities are. And I've learned to identify these are always the greatest areas of my struggles in my mind. But it's also the greatest areas that God uses me in. Amen. That's why the Lord gave me the word to talk about psychological warfare because it has been one of the most intense things from season to season of how the enemy has attacked and you know he comes to steal kill and destroy so if he could take you out here then he's already taken out everything around you that's right that's right philippians 2 5 says let this mind be in you which is also in christ jesus we love to quote the scripture but we still don't, we still haven't grasped a hold of it. We still haven't grasped how to do it. We still haven't grasped how to understand or even flow in the mind of Christ. And that's why we struggle so much with our identity. Because the reality is you don't know who you are. When you don't know who you are, you will always falter at the hands of the enemy. Yes, that's right. So, to, so I want you to open up to Matthew chapter 4. And we're going to be reading from 1 through 11. Then I'll be reading from the Amplified Version. Then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had gone without food for 40 days and 40 nights. He became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus replied, It is written, and forever remains written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Now, I want to focus right there on 
3 and 4. And it's showing you that Jesus identified the weapon the enemy was using against him. His flesh was in a place of vulnerability because he had been fasting for 40 days and nights already. So his, his spirit was strong, but his flesh was weak. And the word says that he was hungry. So the enemy tempted him in that place of hunger. If you are who you say you are, then take these stones and turn it to bread Jesus. to feed that which your flesh desires. Yes, come on. Come on. See, you have to understand that the strategies of the enemy is to attack the lust of your flesh. Yes, come on. That's why Paul said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There will always be a battle between the two until you learn how to overcome. Jesus. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on. So as he identified the weapon, he was able to counteract it with the word of God. Because for every weapon that the enemy raises against you, there's word for it. There's strategy for it. But the problem is we're not in our word enough. So if you're not in your word enough, you're not going to understand how to use what's given to you. The tools that you need, everything that you're crying out for, what you are expecting from God is the word. It's the living, breathing word of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When you focus on what you focus on, will become a part of who you are. Wow. See, Jesus could have taken that moment to focus on how hungry his flesh was. He could have taken that opportunity to say, ah, you know, I am, I am God in the flesh, so I can turn into stone. But he didn't. He chose to identify it and cast it down. And we have to learn to identify the strategy of the enemy's weapon so we can cast it down according to the word of God That's right. and who he called you to be. Jesus. Let's continue reading in Matthew 4. Yes. Verse 5. Then the devil took him into the holy city, Jerusalem, and placed him on a high pinnacle, hmm. the highest point of the temple. And he said mockingly to him, if you are the son of God, Jesus. throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels oh concerning you to serve, care for you, protect and watch over you. And they will lift up your hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written and forever remains, you Jesus. shall not test the Lord your yes. God. Yes. Come on. See, this is why it's so important for you to understand the power of the word of God. It's, understand, it's important for you to understand how great of a weapon it is. It's such a great weapon that the enemy will take it and use it against you. That's right. Come That's on. right. If you don't know your word, the enemy will use it to manipulate and deceive you. You don't believe me? Look at the cults. Look at all the religions. All he took was one scripture out of context. See, that's because that's what the enemy does. He perverts the things of God. Right. And so he was taking the scripture and applying it out of its context to manipulate Jesus into what he was trying to get him to fall and to do. That's right. That's right. That's good. But what was the weapon that Jesus used in this? The word of God. But what else? Humility. Humility is a weapon against the enemy because it's not just the lust of the flesh that he's going to tempt you in but it's the pride of life that's right, that's right. one thing that we struggle the most with as human beings is our pride we want to be justified when we want to be justified he was God he could have did whatever he wanted it wasn't his time yet so he could have thrown himself down and guess what the angels of the Lord would have 
lifted him up. Jesus. And the enemy knew that. See, sometimes we get so caught up in religion that we forget that he's the master deceiver. Yes. You're not the master deceiver. He Come is. On. Jesus. He knows how to just strategically watch you and assign demons to you to watch how you move, to understand your places of insecurity. Come on. Yes, that's Come right. On. That's right. And he will war hell against those very places. That's right. But it goes back to what I said in the, in the beginning, what the Lord told me. That's what the psychological warfare is based on. It's based on what you actually believe about yourself. Yes. Come on, somebody. You guys are too quiet for me today. You're talking good. Jesus. Again, the devil took him up, verse 8, on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory, splendor, magnificence, and excellence of them. And he said to them, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go away, Satan, for it is written and forever remains written, you shall worship the Lord God and serve him only. Jesus, come on. How many times does the, ent the enemy come to tempt you with something new that you desire, right? But it's actually to take your worship from God. Yeah. My God. Yes. Sometimes you think, well, the devil's not in front of me and I'm not worshiping him. Right. But whatever it is that's overtaking you and you're worshiping, you're worshiping the, de the devil. He's using that very thing to take you off task, wow. to cause you to worship him. And this is why we get so confused in our identity and not knowing how to cast down vain imaginations. This is why when the enemy starts to rise up and tell you, you ain't nothing, you can't speak, you don't, you're not articulate enough. Woo, come, on. come on, somebody. Come on. When he tells you, well, look what you were doing last week. You can't tell so-and-so about Christ. You're not a real Christian. Look what's happening in your household. You're not a real woman of God. You're not a real man of God. Because the enemy understands the strategies to use against you to get you to falter in believing who he tells you you are. Wow. Come on, that's it. I remember... Back when I first got saved, and I received, I received a word about the position that we're in today. And I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I wasn't, so when I received it, I didn't understand it. And I literally was like, nope, you're wrong. You're talking to the wrong person, right? Because I didn't understand until I had to, that word literally unfolded through years. Come on. Years of me serving God. Sometimes we receive a word and we want to run with it for today. But there's a process that comes with every single prophetic word that you will receive. It doesn't mean that tonight you're going to go to sleep and tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to be this powerful prophet of God, apostle, minister, elder, whatever it is that God is calling you to be. There's a process you got to walk through. But in order for you to fulfill the full maturation of it. You gotta learn how to take out the enemy in your own mind. Yeah, we want so oh. bad to Jesus. rebuke devils, cast down devils out of other people, but we have not rebuked and cast the devil out of our own head. Jesus. Oh. The Lord was, was telling me, you cannot cast out you walk in agreement with. My God, so Come on. Come on now. And I'm going to use this as an example. When I was younger, I was in a relationship with somebody. Back then, no, we didn't no. have iPhones. Go ahead, Apostle. No, you weren't. Let's not talk about that. My God, so heaven.
young. <laughs> and I was in a relationship. Back then, we didn't have black, we didn't have the iPhones, we didn't have, I mean, my f first phone was in black and white, you know, um, but whenever we would break up, I would change my phone number. Jesus. <laughs> Only for two weeks later to give it to him again. <laughs> then we would get into a fight, break up, something happened, I would change my number again. Honest to God, I probably did it like 10 times <laughs> until I finally got it. But we do the same thing with God. We do the same thing with the enemy. We want to block him when it's convenient and we get tired of his shenanigans. But when we want to feel the comfortability of what we've been lagging in, we open the door back up and the same devil that you've been trying to rebuke, God is saying you can't remove what you're holding hands with. Come on! According um, to author Emma Starks um, in one of her books, The Prophetic Warrior, there's a part, there's a part where she's talking about there's a part where she's talking about how how much goes on in our mind. And so I began to look it up and research it. And our internal dialogue is about 1,500 words per minute. Wow. 1,500 words per minute. Wow. And it goes up if you have caffeine. Jesus. <laughs> so that means that the average person is wrestling with three to four ungodly beliefs every minute. Three to four ungodly beliefs every minute wow. is penetrating through your mind, wow. penetrating through wow. your mind, penetrating wow. through your mind. But what's filtering it? What's filtering it? Wow. If you're not in the word of God as much as what's going on in your mind, then the, there cannot be a shift. Many times we want deliverance, but we don't want to make an actual change in our own lives. And it starts in our mind. That's right. Come on. Come on. We can get you delivered from a withered hand, a spiritual blindness, or a demon on your back, or whatever the case may be. But what are you going to do when you leave the house of God? What are you going to do when you're home by yourself? What are you doing and what are you applying so you don't go back to that very place? Because that means whatever system you are operating and functioning in, there has to be a shift. Yes. There has to be a change. Yes, yes, come on. And today, I'm going to give you some tactics of weapons that are not your usual weapons that you hear about. Come on, come on. This is good. This is good. But this is why we must strengthen ourselves in the Lord. Your mind's capacity and all that's functioning in it, in those moments, the enemy's whispering lies. And we have to learn to discern the voice of the enemy versus our own voice versus when the Lord, thank you, when the Lord is speaking to us. And a lot of times we don't understand that. And that's why we keep faltering back into the same cycles. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, God. What Jesus experienced in the wilderness was an example of intense psychological warfare. Because you got to understand that the enemy wasn't physically in front of him. But he was warring against his mind. Trying to get him to do what he wanted him to do. Because he was trying to stop the purpose and plan of what Christ came for. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Second Corinthians 10, verse 4 to 6 says, The weapon of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Right. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments mm. 
and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. Jesus. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. Jesus. Being ready to punish every act of disobedience when your own obedience is complete. Jesus. Wow. Yes. Come on. In order to take something captive, that means you have to tie it up and lock it up. Jesus. I'm taking you out. I'm binding you. Yes. So that you no longer have a position of authority in my mind. Yes. But if I can't recognize that I've actually been the one holding hands with you Jesus. and giving you leverage in my life to yes. function my how you want to function, then how can I rebuke and cast it out? Most of the time, we're quoting scripture out of order because our life isn't aligned with the word that we're actually saying out of our mouth. Jesus. Constantly we're saying, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But a good portion of the time, you're the weapon formed against yourself. Oh. Tell it, man. A good Jesus. portion of the time, you are the weapon formed against yourself. Here, that's causing wow. you not to prosper. God is telling you, I've called you out. I've pulled you out of darkness. It's just like the Israelites. He pulled them out of Egypt. They saw miracle after miracle after miracle, and still, yet and still, their mind was still captive in Egypt. Though he physically brought them out, their mind was still captive in Egypt. And a lot of times with deliverance, the Lord is bringing you out, but your mind is still in captivity from the very place that God has delivered you from. So God is saying, it's time for you to shift your mind and uproot and dismantle the systems of the enemy that are functioning in your mind. Yes. How do we break it? Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. In behavior, one who manipulates. He's he says to you, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you. As you think, so are you. If you want to know where somebody's truly functioning at, just spend a little time with them and stay quiet. <laughs> spend a little time with them and stay quiet. A lot of times, you see me talk a lot, and then other times you'll see me very quiet because I'm observing and discerning what's around me. And a lot of times people will come to you and say, I need help from this. I need deliverance from this. I need this and that. But they're not sharing the reality of who and what they're holding hands with. That's right. That's right. They're not telling you the truth that, well, I was just involved in some type of situation. And I keep going back to this situation. But yeah, I'm telling God, I want to be.